Reporting live from Dudzeldorf. <laughs> it's the news with Mike Dawson. Well, former undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson is making a comeback. Tyson, age 54, is going to fight Roy Jones Jr. in the eight round exhibition fight September 12th in Carson, California. The battle will be broadcast pay per view as well as on a multimedia platform called Triller. Roy Jones, uh, Tyson, G- Roy Jones Jr. Has, is one, most, one of the most athletic, best fighters ever. He was a light heavyweight. He isn't really a heavyweight, but he retired in the United States. But the, he's been doing fights like overseas. Like you know, he's go fighting a kangaroo for the Sultan of Brunei for like 80 grand a pop. Like, so he's been fighting this whole time. We just haven't known about it. There's plenty of shit you can do. In the, you can retire in the United States if you're a boxer or a porn star, but you can keep going in other countries. <laughs> who bought him for 80 grand? Adam, he, he's the Sultan of Brunei. I don't know. Shabu Shabu! That was his... He would clap his hands. Uh, that was what, yeah. They yes. pay him in Shabu. They pay him in Shabu Shabu. The, uh, Adam, yeah, yeah. Adam, he did, Roy did fight for the heavyweight title, though, before he retired. Yes, he moved up, he moved up to heavyweight, but he's really and, not a heavyweight. No, and, not Ty, and Tyson looks super sharp. I mean, did you see any of that footage yep. of him, like, just hitting yep. the focus pads and stuff? So Amazing. I don't know Amazing. how that's going to work for, uh, for Roy. But, uh, oh, you know what's a funny thing? I, uh... <clears throat> I interviewed Mike Tyson a few years ago for this podcast, and I went to his house. He's in Vegas, by the way. He's in, like, Henderson or somewhere. Uh, so he may be a neighbor. Yes. And I went, to, I went to his house, and the last time I saw him, he was moving slow. He was shuffling his feet. He looked depressed. He was kind of overweight. And this time I saw him, he looked bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and he looked sharp and I said uh, Mike, what's, what have you been doing? What's the difference? What's going on? And he said, I cut it all out Adam, I cut all of it out. I cut out the booze, I cut out the cocaine, I, I cut out the pills, I cut out everything. I'm not doing anything anymore. I cut it all out. And I said not even weed? And he went, whoa, whoa slow down. <laughs> Well, regarding the safety of the event, Tyson says that we're both accomplished fighters. We know how to take care of ourselves. It's an eight-round exhibition. And listen, we'll be all right. Trust me, we can take care of ourselves. It's also been reported that former NBA player Nate Robinson and YouTube star Jake Paul Mm. have agreed to fight on the undercard that night. What? Yeah. (laughs) Nate Robinson. You could have trained him, too, Ace. Yeah, the uh, you had a discussion with him. I guess he never called. Yeah, wait, gonna... a discussion with who? Jake or Jake Paul? Uh, Nate? Jake, Jake Paul uh, came I... in and uh, told him I'd, I'd train him and hold the focus pads for him. But we're we're in some odd entertainment times here, right? Where yeah. this is just full dog and pony show, like celebrities. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got a bootleg porn tape on the internet. Celebrities are just going at it in uh, Carson, California. I wonder how much money. You know, they say exhibition, but they're 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 doing this to get paid, right? Oh yeah, it'll oh, be yeah. a big, yeah, big event. So, and for then sure. we'll what do you think? The, what is the price for the pay per view on this event? Is this nineteen ninety nine? Is this twenty nine ninety nine? Like what? What is this? Because like a you like a legitimate UFC title fight, you know, with a good undercard is fifty nine, sixty nine bucks, right? What is what is this one? I was going to guess fifty I'm because looking. these these are these are more notable names uh, to the general public than even the 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 best UFC fighters. Yeah, Dave all Robinson? the news stories are saying. No, I'm talking about Tyson stories. and Roy Jones. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. All the stories are just saying that it will cost a fee. No one is saying how much it will cost. Roy but it's Tyson's Jones. big comeback. They can go as high as fifty dollars, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Roy Jones I, I is such it. a badass yeah. that yeah, when when Roy Jones was in his prime, before a light heavyweight, I think it may have been a title fight, 
he played in an amateur basketball, basketball game. game. He yep. actually played a game of hoops the yep. afternoon of the fight that was that night and still beat the guy's ass. Yeah, for a semi-pro team, I think that he owned or something like that in Florida. Yeah, it's easier to get playing time when you own the team. Yeah. <laughs> he also, and, and, yeah. and here's another one, Adam. Roy Jones one time had a rap album, and he walked out to his own music rapping, holding the microphone. He was actually That's good. rapping, and, and he walked in and then fought. He also breeds fighting cocks. He does cocks. cock fighting. Yep. He does as, as well. So, uh, although I don't know why we should be surprised that a guy who fights human beings for a living <laughs> likes to watch <laughs> chickens fight on his downtime, right? Mike Tyson loves uh, raising pigeons, so I, th- I guess Ooh. people have that thing. There's your undercard. There's your undercard. <laughs> one of Mike's versus the cocks. One of Mike's pigeons against uh, Roy's cock. <laughs> Well, uh, Texas's <laughs> first drive through strip club has a two-song limit, in case mm. you want to go. Vivid Gentlemen's Club in Houston has set up a drive through service to offer its traditional form of entertainment, along with its bar menu. The venue installed a massive white tent outside. There are steel barriers separating drivers and dancers, neon lights, and a PA system, so I imagine the strip club DJ is working as well. Some of the performers wear masks, some don't, but they're all socially distanced from the cars. Drivers leave tips on the pavement. Now, according to Texas law, <laughs> uh, restaurants can open at half capacity, and bars can make to-go sales only. The strip club identifies as a bar so they're to go orders so people drive in place your order you sit in the car the girls dance for two songs you throw throw some money at them and then they kick you out to wait for your food the money doesn't make much there's not i'm wondering how many like you think guys are driving there or do you think this is an impulse buy like i do with i'll do it with in and out burger i'm just driving i go oh shit like, I yeah. could just be driving well, and yell yeah. to my son, get in the back seat. Just <laughs> go ahead and put the sweater over your head for a few minutes. <laughs> this is an impulse buy. And then also, <laughs> if the club is outside the bathroom, do you oh, think that's shit. a porta potty? And if it is, do you think they have the attendant in there with the mints? And the laborious. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's what a, I would do. I'd get a porta potty, and yeah. I'd have one Nicaraguan guy like standing there with mints and a yeah, towel. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You want a little how, shot, Aqua Velva? <laughs> hey, Chris. Many, they should have some kind of some kind of champagne pop up tent room. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah. How many how many husbands are coming home late with just one sock on? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a serious question. Can you be infected by the glitter at this distance? Yes. Are you going to come home with glitter on you? Maybe this is the perfect time. Hey, honey, I'm going to go pick up dinner. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 In and Out has glitter burgers, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Chris, put that picture back up real quick. Adam, what is up with those crazy rims? I was looking at both I of them. That. It's fucking Mad Max shit. Yeah, yeah, that's 007 shit. It's like Jesus Christ. This is uh, I have I have four thousand dollars worth of Honda Civic and thirteen thousand yeah. dollars worth of rims. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not going to touch your vagina, but my rims will. Yeah. I don't know. The guy, the rims on this car look like the uh, mouth from a uh, alien. Where the, yeah, uh, the the face hugger? Yeah, the face hugger. Yeah, I don't, I don't, or I don't know what this, I don't know what this is. And the car in front of it has it too, and the trunk's open. So uh, I'm not, I'm not sure how that works. What and, are these Autobots? <laughs> <laughs> is that Optimus Prime's penis? What is that? Yeah. All right. Not every idea is a good idea. I, but I was I was thinking of this l- literally the other night in my neighborhood. Well, not that close, but yeah, a few miles away, like in Glendale. There's a couple of these vans that say "topless maids." Oh yeah, 
what is that? Like, you know when you go, what is really going on? It can't be you hire a maid and she shows up and takes her shirt off and then busts out the Windex and starts going at the windows, right? Like, there's, what, what is a topless maid? What is the, How's that even sexy? I, I, well, first off... Right, okay. Now, first off, I've, I have maids. These chicks are somewhere between a two and a half and a three. That you would not... I actually yeah. give them a sweat jacket to put on when they come inside. Yeah, how, how, how bad are your tits when the guy that's p- p- renting it goes, hey, I think you need a broom yeah. as well. <laughs> right. All right, so what is this? Six, six, what is six, the scam? Huge. How does it How does it work? I was, does anyone I was know? listening to a podcast uh, from someone just describing they actually hired the topless maids. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you can imagine, you don't get a lot for your money. Yes, uh, of course, they're topless. Uh, you're not allowed to touch them, of course. You're not allowed to talk to them, I don't think. They will only do light work, like dusting and, like, you know, polishing the table or whatever. Mm. Like, what not, the fuck they, is they, that? They're out of there for, and it's like 45 minutes, like, to there. They dust a little bit. and then they're oh, like, No, 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 no. You're doing my fucking laundry, and you're making me something to eat. That's right. Yeah. And don't forget the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get down there. <laughs> and, uh, you get the down there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be doing some polishing, but it won't be the, right. the curtain oh. rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made a mess here on the hardwood oh. floor, sweetie. Oh, Jesus, Adam. <laughs> get out to Swifter. Oh, my God. Sorry, shabu shabu. <laughs> That's what I yell when I'm polishing my joint with the topless yeah. maid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean up, aisle me. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Dawson. Well, go sports. The NFL yeah. Washington cha- franchise, formerly known as the Washington Redskins, is officially going to change their name. To the Washington football team. The fact no, they're that immediately not. They'll use, yes. They'll use yes. the name football team. Are you fucking season. kidding me? While they try to figure out their new name and how to brand it, the team hopes to finish retiring the Redskins branding by their home opener against the Eagles on September 13th. A, now, a man football named football Philip Martin McCauley has registered a bunch of trademarks for the potential use by mm. the Washington football team uh he told them he'd give them to him free of charge i want to get your take on some of these none of these to me sound very inspiring but this guy spent some money and trademarked the washington red wolves red what wolves 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 all right well first off calling something a football team it sounds like when like when Oliver Stone would do a football movie, but he couldn't clear the yeah, names the of the teams right. in the NFL, yeah. so he just called yeah. like the Memphis Hustlers. He'd the make Sharks. up a bunch of teams. Yeah. yeah, you'd say Washington football team because you didn't buy the rights to say Redskins. So it's way too yeah. generic. So you got you got Red Wolves, right? Red Red Tails. Red Tails. The Washington, the Washington Monuments. Oh no, the that's Washington. not gonna work. The fuck is that? The Washington, yeah, yeah, they just stand, they don't move. The Washington Americans, the what? And the Washington Americans, Um? and the Washington veterans. Oh no, I I can't believe this, but I I like just football team better than all this stuff. (laughs) There is no word on if the football team. Are interested. Can't we just call it the Washington those guys and just just fucking move on with our lives? Yes. And then what happens to the announcer? Like, what's Joe Buck gonna do? He's just gonna have to go to the Washington football teams or the proud heritage of the oh. Washington football team. And I know Dallas and uh, the former Redskins were quite a uh, rival. I, uh, by the way, in terms of like contrasting uniforms, those are good contrasting uniforms. Mm-hmm. The Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. Like, that's a good contrast. I always think about that. Sorry, go ahead, Dawson. Just All kissing right, a police. little hometown ass. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. <laughs> police are on the hunt for a thief who stole a 50 pound dildo from a Las Vegas sex boutique. Surveillance video, which I'll show you here, shows. Oh, uh, I was going to say, man. 
I hope it was a sex boutique because that would be the worst seafood restaurant ever. Like, I've, I've seen the king crab up on the wall, but uh, sorry. We'll watch the video. And we got the, we got the masked man here strolling into the Deja Vu Love oh Boutique in broad mm. daylight. Yeah. And he heads straight for a three foot, 50 pound dildo. Mm. He picks it up. Mm-hmm. slings it over his shoulder What's and then saunters nonchalantly out the door. The suspect fled in his Dodge Caliber. Oh, of course it's a Dodge <laughs> Caliber. That's the only kind of that's, that's the only getaway, the getaway car. The getaway car is important to the story Always. just for that reason. This yeah. guy drives a Dodge Caliber. I would uh, like to be offering. I would like to be in charge of the police force that was going to bust this case wide open. I was like we have no information on this gentleman, but I'm telling you, if we find the woman with the world's biggest pussy, she will lead us straight to this criminal. So get out there, boys, and be well, safe. The dildo is the world's largest retail dildo. Mm. It's called the Moby, and it'll run you about 600 bucks. Oh, that's mm. nice. That's kind of a good deal. Mm. It's a low lot of re- dick for six hundred bucks. I uh, I was kind of hoping some good Samaritan tried to wrestle it away from him in the parking lot, and he fought him off with the oh, dildo. So and this guy's using a hula hoop oh. for a cock ring, and I got all got sorts a, of things going through my head. We got a clockwork orange situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm going to blame this on COVID because I think the mask has really emboldened uh, dildo mm-hmm. thieves in the last. It's yeah. not it's not been talked about enough, but I think this mask has really given them a license to steal not only dildos but vibrators and butt plugs. You know what I don't understand, Adam? Hmm. It's like places like Home Depot, Best Buy, Target. They got like strict re- restrictions when you try to get in. They they push you back and best right. by they they do your your they thermometer they read you they right. make sure you're six feet apart but but what if deja vu just lets anybody in if anyone's spreading covid it's these fucking people it's a good i'm looking for a 600 pound cock <laughs> by the way i don't have covid i don't have COVID. yeah good. yeah that's <laughs> high risk joke. that's high risk i agree high risk completely well the Washington Post has settled their $250 million lawsuit with Covington teen Nick Sandman. Oh, good. Uh, the lawsuit was settled on his birthday. They're the second domino to fall. Uh, Sandman declared the victory in a tweet on his 18th birthday. It is unclear how much the newspaper has settled for. It's the teen's second win in a whopping $800 million defamation battle against a number of news outlets, including The Washington Post, CNN, ABC, CBS, The Guardian, The Hill, and NBC. Uh, Salmon, of course, was uh, on the news after a abortion rally at the Capitol, and you know the story. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, Salmon tweeted this. He said, we have settled with WAPO and CNN. The fight isn't over. Two down, six to go. Don't hold your breath at Jack. Maybe saying that he's going to sue Twitter as well. We'll see. I don't know. That, that little guy. Imagine that. So I think, I think his high school went on a field trip, and that's where this whole thing broke out because he was with the rest of yes. his high school mate. This guy goes on a field trip, comes home... And now he's going to be $50 million richer. (laughs) More than that, I would imagine. My field trip, when I went on a field trip, I went to fucking Alvera Street. My high school went to Alvera Street, which is essentially a street in Los Angeles that's filled with Mexicans, which is really any street. In Los Angeles, I probably had more Mexican kids on the fucking bus ride on the way over to Alvera Street than I did when I got to Alvera Street. I got nothing out of that. The other, uh, the other trip I went on was I went to the uh, Lari's seasoning plant, and I got out of there with a packet of taco seasoning. Now, you want to talk about a chasm in paydays on field trips. Nicholas Sandman... 
$75 million. Adam Carolla, packet of taco seasoning. That's a pretty big spread in terms of field trips, people. Now, if I had any hopes for my son, I would hope that he was on the $75 million payday bus versus the taco seasoning packet bus with me. Sorry, Dawson. Go ahead. That's all right. Uh, A northern Michigan restaurant lost thousands of dollars in sales after a busboy claimed he had COVID-19, but the employee just wanted a day off. Oh, we did this one, right? Didn't we do this one, Brian? Didn't we? Didn't Gina do this one? I think Gina did the story. Yeah. Sloppy Uh, seconds, Dawson. Shabu, shabu. Let's let's shabu, shabu. (laughs) Let's move on. I lost thousands of dollars to Adam's fucking mouth. That's right. (laughs) Show wish I would have called in a bomb threat and saved him some fucking money, but I showed up. Jesus Christ, Adam! Don't you have COVID? (laughs) Well, speaking of COVID. In South Africa, there was a truck loaded with several 40-liter containers full of live COVID-19 samples. Guess what happened? It was hijacked by armed (laughs) men outside a clinic. The vehicle was abandoned not far from the scene and has since been recovered. But the virus samples are still missing. What? Oh, this is the beginning of a Vin Diesel movie, right? (laughs) Is Matt Damon in this headline? Yeah. That's the part where they come up to Vin's cabin. He's like, you know I'm retired. We need you back for one more. (laughs) Hold on. Let me look at my dog. Okay. One more mission. But they're going to frame him. That's how it works every time. But don't worry. He's coming after them. Sorry, Dawson. Oh, Anyone ever right, ask so. you to do one more thing? If they are after you, I don't care. It always goes south. If they ask you to come out of retirement for one more yeah. job, don't do it. I don't, don't care. Do it. I don't give her your fucking pool, man. If somebody knocks on your door, it's like, just skim one more pool. No. No. I'm done. I'm done. Don't do it. You saw what happened to Lance Armstrong. Don't fucking yeah. do it, man. I don't care if you do uh, if you do copier, printer, uh, repair. I don't nope. care what your job is. I don't nope. care. You cannot come out of retirement for one more. I can come out for two jobs, but not one more. That's how it works. Let's do one more, Dawson. One more. Oh, one more. Don't do it, Dawson. Right. Dawson, say no. <laughs> Well, a man nicknamed Rambo after he disarmed four police officers at gunpoint and disappeared into Germany's Black Forest has finally been captured following a five-day manhunt. Mm. 31-year-old Yves Rausch was found Friday still hiding in the forested hills around a small town in west southwestern Germany. More than 2,500 police officers were involved in his search. After wow. getting a tip from two witnesses, police special forces and a, and a sniffer dog found him sitting in a bush with four handguns lying in front of him and a hatchet in his lap. Uh, he was injured wow. during the arrest. Hold on a second. Suffered. It would suck to be a cop who got your weapon taken away and the guy ran into the black forest, right? Like, like any yeah. cop where you got your gun taken from you. So you started off with the gun, and the other guy just had jogging shorts on, and now he's got your gun. And I'm just saying, I know cops. They have a sense of humor. They like to, uh, they, they, they like to take digs at other cops, you know, that's sort of that uh, little frat boy kind of thing. And there's no way, if you were that cop, that you wouldn't take a ton of shit back at the precinct, right? Like, oh, if yeah. there was... If there was a birthday a year later and they were handing out cake and you were the cop who got his gun taken and someone handed you a slice of cake, they'd go, watch it real careful, Tim. Don't let anyone steal it. You wouldn't want some young guy grabbing it and running into the black forest, okay? (laughs) That'd be his entire fucking career. Yep. Here's how it happened. Uh, Police were alerted to a suspicious person carrying a bow and arrow. So officials said... That uh, uh, he, the Rambo, uh, initially cooperated with these four policemen, 
But then he suddenly pulled a gun on him and forced them to hand over their service weapons. He didn't oh. injure anybody. Uh, oh. But during questionings following his arrest, he told investigators that the weapons he threatened officers with was even a gun that only fired blanks. Mm. Uh, but it's all still under investigation. But the, the German Rambo finally down. So worse, a guy had a cap gun, you had four cops, and they all had to hand over their fucking pieces to this guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I've on the other it. hand, Even worse. if you're running around with a bow and arrow, don't we get to just shoot you? Yeah. Like, is that kind of on you? Yeah. I just feel like if you're going to leave the house with a bow and arrow, yeah. you may get shot. And again, that is kind of going to be on, on you. I don't feel yeah. like... Uh, I don't feel like we need to hit you with the non-lethal stuff or we need to talk it out of your hands. If you got a bow and arrow, and especially a crossbow, and especially one of those old-timey ones with a crank on it, if you got the fucking bow and arrow with the crank on it, we can shoot you from inside the cop car. Yeah. They don't even have to get out. Shabu shabu! <laughs> All right, Dawson. Yeah. I'm going to bring it home. Yeah, Do you have a news? That's the news. I'm Mike Dawson. Later, Hosen. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, Gina. Your job is safe. That was the news with Mike Dawson.